She says, are all dreams true? If not, how to differentiate among the dreams and dreams of which time of the day or night come true? As people say, dreams that we see in early mornings come true. Dreams, people nowadays place on them a lot of emphasis and importance. And we don't ask psychiatrists about the nature of dreams and whether they come true or not, because this is something that is not studied properly and the results are not certain. It's all theories. While when we go to the Quran and to the Sunnah, we find that there are different types of dreams. The famous, the most famous dream of all in the Quran, the dream that Ibrahim peace be upon him, saw, and he told his son that he had seen in a vision, in a dream, that he is slaughtering him. And we know that the dreams of prophets are a revelation. And we know the rest of the story. We also have the dream of the king of Egypt, who saw seven skinny cows eating seven fat cows. And you know the story where Yusuf, peace be upon him, interpreted it and it was the reason that he was set free and later on became the Aziz of Egypt. In the Sunnah, the Prophet والسلام, used to, after Fajr prayer, ask people who had seen a dream and he would interpret it for them. And sometimes the companions would engage in interpreting it. And this tells us that the middle path is not to say that everything we see is true, but also it's not to be ignored totally. So how do we classify dreams? First of all, without any doubt, any dream that you wake up feeling depressed, frightened, sad, because of it, this is from shaitan. And this is one of the points in the job description of shaitan, to sadden and to depress a believer. Allah mentioned this in the Quran in so many places. If it is something that you wake up feeling good about it, this can be one of two. Either it is a good vision from Allah Azza wa Jal, and it's a glad tiding of something good going to happen. Or it is something that you wish and desire. So your subconscious makes you feel and see and touch what you desire. In the Sahih, the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, that dreams are of three types. One is a vision from Allah Azza wa Jal. And a good dream is one part of 46 parts of prophethood. And this is hadith authentic, which means that after the Prophet ﷺ, there is no prophethood. Only these glad tidings that are given to people that are considered to be one part of 46 parts of prophethood. What does that mean? Before the Prophet ﷺ be 
became a prophet for six months before revelation, he used to see dreams that come accurately and are fulfilled exactly as he had seen them. And this was for the duration of six months. And he lived after that, after becoming a prophet, for 23 years. So multiply 23 by 2, you get 46. And six months is the part that the prophet Aslam used to see of that. Now, this is the first part. The Prophet says, some the second type of dreams are whispers of shaitan. This is when you wake up and you saw snakes and scorpions and dogs running after you, eating you alive, being thrown into fire, having calamity. You wake up frightened, whether it's for you or for someone else. This is from shaitan. What to do? The Prophet said, so whenever you see something you dislike in a dream, just when you wake up, say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem three times. And then spit dryly to your left, like this. Dry spit. And do not speak about it to any soul. Never go to a friend, a parent, a sibling, a spouse, telling them, Wallahi, I had a scary dream last night and it was about this and that. No, the Prophet says it's haram. It's not permissible for you to do. And he said that if you don't say anything about it and you do the procedures that, that I had just described, the Prophet said, والسلام, it will not harm you. It will not harm you. So it's just a dream. Yes, Sheikh, but it's, it's, it's occupying my mind. Forget it. It's, not, it's nothing. It's just from shaitan. The third part of the dreams that the Prophet told us about, والسلام, is what your subconscious dictates upon you. And this is what you meet and feel during the day. So, for example, a mechanic when he goes to bed, he's thinking about the car engines and how to fix them, how to make them stronger. He may see himself in a race car or inventing a new engine or anything of that sort, which is his subconscious dictating it to him. A person, and, and this is a story they say, about a sheikh and his student. The student came to the sheikh and said, oh, sheikh, I love the prophet so much, but I haven't seen him in one dream of mine. So the sheikh told him, okay, you spend the night in my house today. So the, the, the student went to his sheikh and the sheikh prepared dinner for him. And he put a lot of garlic, a lot of salt, a lot of things that make you thirsty and after dinner every time the student asks for water and he says we don't have any water uh, maybe later on maybe before we go to bed and he did not give him water and they went to sleep and then they woke up they went to pray Fajr and came back and then the Sheikh asked his student what did you see the students said Ah, oh, I saw a lot of rivers, and it was raining, it was so many, many things that involved water, and so much water. He said, mm, subhanAllah, your thirst was sincere, so your dreams came true. And had your love to the Prophet ﷺ was sincere, you would have seen him in your dream. And as bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said, rarely a night passes, without me seeing the Prophet ﷺ in a dream. And we know how much love Anas ibn Malik had to the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, these are the three types that the Prophet ﷺ told us about. Now, is there any time of the day or night that people, when they see a dream, 
it is usually a fact that it would come true? The answer is no. The answer is no. You could see a dream after Fajr. You can see a dream before Fajr, after Asr. This has no significance at all. It can be one of the three types that the Prophet had told us about, and Allah knows best.